This is a picture test in practical neuroanatomy. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then, replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the spinal cord. Name the foramen through which the structure passes at the level indicated by the pointer. What is the vertebral level against which the same structure terminates distally in the adult? This is a posterior dissection of the head and neck after removal of part of the occipital bone. You can see here the cerebellum in the posterior cranial fossa. The spinous processes and laminae of vertebrae have been removed, exposing the spinal cord from the back. Note that at the level of the pointer, the spinal cord is continuous with the medulla oblongata through foramen magnum. The spinal cord is a long structure. It's about 45 centimeter in mean length, and it is roughly cylindrical, but generally narrows along its uh, length from cranial to caudal direction, becomes narrower. In the adult, the inferior or the caudal end of the spinal cord is located at the level of the interspace or intervertebral disc between the first and second lumbar vertebrae. Keep in mind that by the time of birth, the caudal end of the spinal cord is opposite the disc between L2 and L3. But because there is a slight difference in growth rate that continues during childhood, then the adult spinal cord will be shorter in comparison to the vertebral column and it will end opposite the disc between L1 and L2 vertebrae. Identify the structure A and name the large neurons located in B. A is the anterior commissure of the spinal cord. The anterior white commissure or the ventral white commissure is a bundle of nerve fibers which cross the midline of the spinal cord just anterior to the gray commissure. It contains different types of fibers crossing from side to side. First, it contains fibers that originate in the nucleus proprius here and they cross the midline to form the anterior and lateral spinothalamic tracts carrying pain and temperature sensations. Also, they include fibers of the ventral or anterior spinocerebellar tract. These fibers arise from neurons that are located at the base of the dorsal horn and they cross to the other side and then they ascend up into the ventral spinocerebellar tract which is located more at the periphery. This is the site of the anterior or ventral spinocerebellar tract, more at the periphery of the lateral funiculus of the spinal cord. Another group of fibers are the fibers of the anterior corticospinal tract. These fibers, they descend from the cortex, they cross the midline and they synapse or terminate on anterior horn cells. Remember that the corticospinal fibers, 75 to 90% of them, they cross in the medulla as the pyramidal decussation to form the lateral corticospinal tract. This is the site of the lateral corticospinal tract. It is located in the lateral funiculus. But the non-crossing fibers, those 25 to 10% of fibers that do not cross, they continue into the anterior corticospinal tract and the ventral funiculus, and they cross at segmental levels using the anterior white commissure to cross in order to terminate on anterior horn cells. So B are the anterior horn cells, also called alpha motor neurons or ventral horn motor neurons. They are found at all levels of the cord, but the number and arrangement of the motor neuronal groups vary 
depending on the level. For example, in the lumbosacral region, which is shown here in this section, these large alpha motor neurons are aggregated into medial and lateral nuclear group. In the thoracic region, only the medial group is found. The large numbers of the ventral horn motor neurons in the cervical and in the lumbosacral enlargement here reflects the extensive motor innervation required for the uh, nerve supply of the upper limb in the cervical region and the lower limb in the lumbosacral region. Identify the structure indicated by the pointer. What is the function of neurons located at this location? Now, this is the intermediate lateral cell column or the lateral horn of the spinal cord. It's a nucleus, but it is confined to the thoracic and upper lumbar regions of the cord. Remember that they are the same sections as the nucleus dorsalis of Clark. Probably you can see the nucleus dorsalis here as well at the base of the uh, dorsal horn. Now this is a thoracic segment of the cord and identification of the level here that it's a thoracic segment is supported by the presence of course of the lateral horn and by the narrow ventral horn. In the ventral horn we can only find the medial nuclear group of anterior horn cells. There is no need for a lateral group because there is no limb to supply here. The lateral group or the lateral extension of the anterior horn is present in the cervical and um, into, uh, region to supply the upper limb and in the lumbosacral region to supply the lower limb. This nucleus, the intermediate lateral cell column, consists of sympathetic preganglionic motor neurons. The axons exit with the ventral root of the spinal nerve. They leave the spinal nerve to enter the sympathetic trunk via the white ramus communicans. So preganglionic sympathetic fibers. What type of information is transmitted by fibers at location A? And what is the approximate level of this section? Now the fibers are located in the dorsal funiculus. In fact, they are laterally located. So they are the fibers of the fasciculus cuneatus. Whether it, is, it was fasciculus cuneatus or the medially located fasciculus gracilis, both tracts in the dorsal funiculus, they convey sensations of discriminative or fine touch, proprioception, means position sense, conscious proprioception, and vibration. The difference here is that the sensations from the lower limb, they ascend medially in the fasciculus gracilis, while the sensory information from the upper limb, they ascend laterally in the fasciculus cuneatus. Thus, the fibers comprising the dorsal column are said to be somatotopically organized. The reason for that is that the fibers are added to the lateral side of the dorsal funiculus as we ascend rostrally, as we ascend upwards. Thus, at lower spinal levels, in the sacral and lumbar region, lower half of the thoracic cord, only fasciculus gracilis is seen in sections because the fasciculus cuneatus is added later on from the lateral side above the mid-thoracic level of the cord and in the cervical region. Now this will bring us to answer the second part of the question about the approximate level of the section. This section is at a lower cervical spinal cord, a cervical enlargement at the region of origin of the brachial plexus. The reason here, you can note the prominent lateral extension of the ventral horn for the motor neurons supplying the brachial plexus. In addition, I have just mentioned the division of the dorsal column into two components on, on each side, a fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. Also, you can see that there is a large white to gray ratio. And this is characteristic of the cervical region because in the cervical region, 
the descending fibers have not yet been consumed. So we have a lot of descending fibers. At the same time, the ascending fibers are reaching their maximum, being added to as they ascend the spinal cord. So we have a great amount of white, ma uh, white matter in the cervical region, and this results in a large white to gray ratio. Name the location of cell bodies of the tracts A and B. Tract A is located in the dorsal funiculus. In fact, it is located medially. So these are the fibers of the fasciculus gracilis. Now, whether it was fasciculus gracilis or the laterally located fasciculus cuneatus, both tracts in the dorsal funiculus, they convey the same modalities of sensation. The difference is that the sensations from the lower limb ascend in the fasciculus gracilis, while sensations from the upper limb ascend in the fasciculus cuneatus. The fibers here, whether in the fasciculus gracilis or the fasciculus cuneatus, they are first order neurons. The cell bodies are located in the dorsal root ganglion. So the dorsal root ganglion has pseudo unipolar neurons a peripheral process, a central process. The central process enters the spinal cord through the posterior root. The fibers, they do not relay in the spinal cord, but ascend up in the dorsal funiculus to reach medullary levels, where they relay in the nucleus gracilis or in the nucleus cuneatus, depending on their origin. So these are first order neurons. Their cell bodies are located in the dorsal root ganglion of a spinal nerve. The axons are myelinated axons of medial division of the dorsal root of the spinal nerve, and they convey sensations of uh, discriminative touch, proprioception, and vibration. Now, B represent the location of the spinothalamic tracts, lateral and ventral spinothalamic tracts, these are often grouped together as the anterolateral system. The fibers here, they are of second order neurons. First order neurons are also present in the dorsal root ganglion. They convey pain, touch, and temperature sensation. Central processes enter the spinal cord through the lateral division of the dorsal root. But the fibers, they relay on dorsal horn cells. And then the fibers here, the neurons in the nucleus proprius, they give rise to axons that cross into the anterior white commissure and ascend in the contralateral spinothalamic tract, that is B. So the fibers in B are crossed fibers at this level, while the fibers in A are uncrossed fibers, yet as a system, which is called the dorsal column medial lemniscus system, the system as a whole that is represented in A is crossed, but the crossing takes place in the medulla, not at the level of the spinal cord. So returning back to the question, location of cell bodies of tract A are located in the dorsal root ganglion because the tract consists of first order neurons, now, tract B is a tract formed of axons of second-order neurons. The cell bodies are located in the contralateral nucleus proprius, but the first-order neurons are located in the dorsal root ganglion. So the answer for B is the nucleus proprius, and the answer for A is the dorsal root ganglion. In syringomyelia, the classical clinical picture is that of a yoke-like anesthesia for pain and temperature over the shoulders and upper limbs. Which of the labels is most likely the site of the lesion? Now, in syringomyelia, there is occlusion of the central canal, and um, the occlusion typically occurs at lower cervical and upper thoracic levels. Now, this occlusion of the central canal results in cavitation. The, the canal will become dilated, forms a cavity, and the cavitation is thus takes place uh, in the central region 
of the spinal cord, specifically in the cervical and thoracic regions of the spinal cord. Now, if there is a cavity in the middle, then this will typically damage the white matter fibers that cross in the anterior white commissure. These crossing fibers, uh, res destruction of them results in loss of pain and temperature uh, sensation because here we have crossing of the fibers that constitute the uh, anterior and lateral spinothalamic tracts. Also, the motor function will be affected because some of the fibers of the anterior corticospinal tract cross here at the white commissure, anterior white commissure, to terminate on anterior horn cells. So they will also be affected. Uh, this is here, this is the region of the nucleus proprius, which uh, cell bodies give rise to the fibers that cross again in the anterior white commissure and ascend in the ventrolateral spinothalamic tract. Destruction of these fibers, the red ones, result in the yoke-like anesthesia. There will be loss of pain and temperature sensation over the shoulders and upper limb because it is the level of the lesion is in the cervical region, as we mentioned. Now, later in the disease, there will be an expanding lesion. Expanding lesion could also affect anterior horn cells and result in lower motor neuron lesion. Uh, typically in syringomyelia, proprioception, uh, discriminative touch, and vibration are not affected. Uh, these modalities are transmitted by the dorsal funiculus and uh, the fibers are not, do not cross the midline at this location, so they are not affected in this disease.